Alright, hi everyone. This video is a bit late, but for a good reason, because I've got lots of downloadable resources for you today. Basically, over the last week I've been upgrading some of my old packages for Blender, specifically the material related ones, and that's because I'm making everything compatible with the asset browser in Blender. Now the asset browser is a somewhat new feature, we've been talking about it for a few months, but I was waiting for it to be a bit more updated and stable before updating the packages. Now there's some free and paid stuff in this video, so I'm just going to give you a quick rundown of what's been updated, and then I'm going to give you a demonstration of the asset browser, the different resources, things you can do with them and all of that. So first of all my modular metals packet which is a completely procedural collection of metal materials has been updated for the asset browser. There's new thumbnails, I've made some changes to some of the node groups to tidy them up, make them a bit more useful and so on. The same goes for the ambient grunge product. So that's now asset browser compatible with both the material and the node group. The procedural patterns pack has again been made asset browser compatible. So that's for both the demonstration materials and the node groups in that package. Also the free node group tools package has, you guessed it, been made asset browser compatible. So all of the node groups inside of that have been flagged as assets, which means you can just drag them into your scene if you're like wanting to build complex shaders. And that package has now also been made available on Blender Market, so you can grab it on there as well. But because they don't allow free products, it's $1. But also more excitingly, there's a brand new completely free package for people called the Community Material Pack. So this delightful package is a collection of all of my previously shared free materials, including samples of paid products, basic templates I like using, and all stuff like that. It will be updated over time. So you can download that now on Gumroad or again Blender Market for one dollar. On the screen now I'll show you a general collection of what's available and I've been sharing some of this stuff on Twitter as well. So I thought instead of having my different free materials and samples scattered around all different packages making it difficult for people to collect, I'll just put them all in one place called the Community Material Pack. And any future free samples or free experiments will also be put into this package. So it's all contained in one place, meaning you can take that one blend file and put it into your own asset library and use it. Simple, easy, really cool. Also we can make this a community thing as well so if you want to contribute like a really useful template material for the package then just let me know and I can throw it in there. Oh yeah and by the way it's all CC0 so you can take any of those materials and redistribute them however you like in both commercial and non-commercial projects. So yeah just have fun with it. So now let's move on to the more tutorial part of this video where I'm going to talk about the asset browser and show you these different packages and how you can organize them to your liking. So here I am inside of my default startup file. You might recognize this because I did a video recently about making your own startup file. You can also download mine on Gumroad as well, of course. But you might notice there are some changes because now I've got this asset browser window down here. And it looks a bit messy. There's so many things in here. What are all of these? There's models, materials, these little file looking icons. Those are actually node groups. But if you look over to the left here, you can see the source and category settings for the asset browser. So with this drop down here, we can choose where we're looking for the assets. I'll tell you how to set this up in a second. So so if I choose my general asset library, which contains all of my resources, then I've set up categories here. So materials, if I click on these, I will have all of my materials, all the ones I've ever made available here for us to drag into the scene. So for example, if I go into the rendered view, maybe I'll choose my complex copper material. It's one of my favorites, drag it onto the object. And there it is straight in the scene taken from another blend file. We don't need to do any weird appending or copy pasting. And there it is. So under this material category, I've labeled the different packages I have. So ambient grunge, community. So this is the new community material pack. Maybe I could drag in the gold foil from there. Modular metals, procedural patterns. Maybe I'll drag the purple lines in and stylized hard surface materials. Oh, I completely forgot about those as well. Yeah, so the stylized hard surface material pack has also been updated. Sorry, I've been doing so many things the last few days. I can't keep them all in my mind. And then I have a models category. So this at the moment just holds the template models, which I have from the uh, material packages. I really like this interface here. When you try and drag objects in using the asset browser, you can see it has this wire framey gizmo and you can just drag objects in there. So let me kind of rescale this down, rearrange it. Let's grab another one of these metal materials. Let me use the mega shader re Google, that's another one of my favorites. Turn the iron age down, change the iron hue result, zoom in and see all of those details. Okay, I probably shouldn't play around. I need to actually do some teaching here. It's very easy to get distracted with the asset browser. Okay, so the way you set this up is if you go to edit preferences and then to file paths, you'll notice a section in here called asset libraries. So with the asset browser, going back down to this source dropdown, you're allowed to create as many asset libraries as you like. And these are basically folders somewhere on your computer. When you have an asset library selected, Blender will have a look at all of the blend files contained inside of that folder, look for everything marked as an asset, and then make it available in the asset browser for you. So for example, you can see here, I've got my library called asset library, quite an obvious name, and the location is E, work, and then asset library. If I open the folder, this is what it looks like. And one of the things I really like about the asset browser is that it doesn't just look in that folder. It looks, I believe, recursively inside of all the other folders inside of that. So notice here, I've got all my different packages, the 
there might be a bit of a spoiler here. So if I click on modular metals, for example, I've got my modular metals V2 blend file. So this contains all the materials marked as assets. So this asset library is listed here. And then in the asset browser, I've selected it here. So now if I click on all, all of the content in there marked as assets is available. Well, how do you mark content as assets? Well, let's take a look, shall we? So if I right click on any one of these and choose open blend file, it's going to open the source blend file in a new instance of Blender. So here I'm inside of the community pack. And you can see my lovely demonstration here of all the different types of materials. We've got the glass dispersion shader. We've got an emission which dampens around edges and ambient occlusion, frosted glass, a free sample of the corroded copper, plastic, brushed metal, some candy subsurface stuff going on and some alien ruin texture. So if I click on any one of these, we can see here in the material list that we have the assigned material. If we right click on it, then there'll be a couple of options, mark as asset and clear asset. So this one's already marked as asset and that's represented here by this asset icon, which replaces the fake user icon you might notice. Now, when you mark a material as an asset, it's going to automatically generate a thumbnail for it. And these thumbnails are really, really good. Like they produce some cool results in most cases. But one thing to keep in mind is that the thumbnails it generates is based on the preview window here. So notice that we have the sphere selected. If we chose a different object like this shader test object here, when you mark that material as an asset, it will render a thumbnail using that object instead. So I make sure to leave all of mine on the sphere because I think that's more consistent and it just looks good. Now, of course, you can mark other types of objects as assets. So if I took my material blob here, which is hidden, let me show that one. You see, it's got the asset icon there. And again, if you right click, you can mark as asset, clear asset, etc. You can also mark node groups as assets. So if I take a look at my emissive object down here, you can see I have my get edges and get AO nodes. These come from the node group tools package. So how do we mark these as assets? Because you can't just right click on them and then mark them as assets there. Well, the way you do that is by going up to the outliner, clicking on this drop down here, going to Blender File, where we can see all the different types of data at once. Then if we go down to the Node Group section and expand that, you'll be able to see all the different node groups we have in our file. So then if we right click these, then we have the options to mark them as assets. Okay, that's great. So now you have stuff marked as assets in the browser. It's a good idea to organize your content so it's easy for you to find. You can do this any way you like. I mean, you could make an asset library for each package you have, but for me, I really wanted to be able to see all of my content at once. So that's why I have literally all of my packages inside of one asset library. So I can click on all down here and see everything. So the way you make new categories is by pressing the plus button down here. And then you can double click that and name it to anything you like. So I'm just going to delete this one because I've already got my categories there. So save materials, for example, you can also press the plus over here to make subcategories and keep going down like that. So in my case, I've done the packages underneath each of the data types. So materials, you can see all the packages here. Shader node groups, we've got all the packages here as well. You might want to do it the other way around. So you might make categories for all of the packages and then do the data types underneath those. It's completely personal preference. But what it means is we can see everything here at once. So I can now just start dragging stuff onto the object which is great because it saves us a lot of time. So if I want to add the grunge material, I can do that here. But here's the really interesting thing about having both materials and node groups in the asset browser. This is a proper workflow improvement because say I have my ambient grunge material here, which adds grunge around an object procedurally. I used to have to copy and paste or append the ambient grunge material in or the node group and then take that and then like load it into my other material and then like string them together. The asset browser makes this a lot more easy. So let me show you what I mean. If I take my complex copper material and put that on the object here, Let's say I want to add grunge to this object. Well, all I need to do is take a look at my material nodes here. If I expand that, go down to the asset browser, down to my shader node groups, ambient grunge, and there's the node group. And if I drag that in, it will appear in the nodes. Now, all I need to do is connect these together. Now, because I only really want to take the color, I'm actually going to make a new glossy BSDF, plug the roughness and the normal of that copper shader into that, pass the color into the base color of the ambient grunge node, and then pass that to the glossy and that will be our output. And now we have the grunge starting to generate on the object. So I can control the muck level and the strength to change how that looks. So very easily, we can start combining different node groups and shaders just by dragging them in from the asset browser. And again, it's all procedural. So I can go back to the complex copper, turn the age down for that so we can make it younger or older and still have the grunge generating over the top of it. So there's excellent artistic control. Okay, so that's fun. And recently I released my procedural patterns pack to help with making interesting shaders. So I haven't planned this bit. Let's improvise and play around with them. Oh, that's another thing as well. I added a Trusha tiling node group to uh, my procedural patterns pack. I keep remembering things I've been working on throughout the week. So let's drag this one in and combine it with our material and see if we can make something interesting here. So I think I'm going to actually use the generated texture coordinate for the vector of this node 
episode and it might be interesting to actually use this for the roughness so we'll get some strange like um, reflective pattern going if i just plug this in straight away let's see what happens well, that's pretty cool. It's like some kind of sci-fi but Greek-ish looking pattern, but it's kind of randomized. Let's change the scale of that. Oh, that's quite fancy actually, I like that. We can change the thickness as well, so we can make that thinner or thicker. Maybe we should mix this with the original roughness. So let's plug the original one in there, and then the second one, and make that our roughness. And what happens if we add them together? So there we go, we have control to add it on top. And this can basically also act as our mask, so maybe I will just expand this to make it easier to see. Add another mix RGB node, take this as our mask, then give us the ambient grunge color. Let's plug that in to start with, and then we can go for something different like this. That's interesting, but it's quite a strong color, so I'm gonna actually add a math node after that mask. Let's multiply it and reduce it a bit. And I think something like that's pretty cool. So again, completely improvised, did not plan that, and I like the result. So that's just a demonstration to show that you can just like drag stuff in from the asset browser, start playing around and get some cool results. Again, I get like really excited about this stuff because it's completely procedural again. So we can, oh look, as I add the age, oh, that's really cool. I like the look of that. Cool moments. This is what makes stuff worthwhile when you get excited by the stuff you're making. Maybe I should save that as like another material. Yeah, let's do it. That's a good demo. All right, so look, I'm going to duplicate this material here. I'm going to name it something like, I don't know, let's just do YouTube friends for a laugh. So we've got a new material. I'm going to right click it, mark as asset. So if we go to our current file here and scroll all the way down, we can see the YouTube friends file. Now it's generating the preview while I'm talking. So we're going to give that a minute to resolve. Obviously, the more complex the shader, the longer it's going to take to generate the preview. Okay, there we go. Now it's done. So we've got our thumbnail there. I think it looks pretty cool. Now this file I'm using isn't actually in the asset library, so I'm going to save it in there now. So I've gone to file, save as, I've got my asset library here. So let's name it YouTube friends. So now that's been saved in the asset library, you can see here under the asset library source, the material has now appeared in the unassigned category. This is obviously for all of the assets that you haven't put into a category yet. So if I click and drag the material and put it on materials, it will now appear in the materials category. So if we go all the way to the bottom, we can see YouTube friends there. Now, for example, if I go to a completely new file, I've got my asset library selected, materials again, and at the bottom, we can see it here. So let's delete that sphere, maybe bring in Suzanne, smooth her out a bit, go to the rendered view. If I drag the YouTube friends material on, you'll see it appear right there. Procedural and ready to use with anything. So that's a demonstration of the asset browser and giving you a little preview of my different asset packs available. So feel free to take a look at those different packages. Again, there's free and paid stuff. Play around with it, enjoy, make something cool, and make sure to show me if you make anything with it. Again, just to clarify, the community material pack is CC0, but the paid packs are not. So just keep that in mind. But before we close this up, friend of the channel Southern Shotty has just released a really interesting and fun looking asset pack called the Crafty Asset Pack. It's available in both Gumroad and Blender Market. It contains over 100 assets ready for the asset browser. This includes things like models and materials and particles, all sorts of stuff to give you a really fun kickstart into making artwork. All of the updates are included for free of the package and it's compatible with both Cycles and Eevee. And again, just like I showed you in this video, you can take that, add it to your own asset library, and then just drag the content into your scene. So I'll show you some demonstrations on the screen now. There's a nice variety of materials for different types of use cases. There's stuff like cardboard, cork, metal, paper, styrofoam, paint, wood, and all sorts of other stuff. He set them up as node groups so you can control different parameters and attributes to change how they look. There's also a variety of patterns which you can play with. So this is again similar to my procedural patterns pack, but Southern Shot is using a bunch of texture stuff here. Different particle systems like fur, sequins, glitter, and more. And for the textures, there's also 4K and 1K options. And if that's not enough, he's just released a video free for everyone to watch on YouTube called Blender 3D Materials Explained Beginner to Pro, providing a bunch of techniques on how to make really interesting materials. And I should also say he was nice enough to give us a discount code for the crafty asset pack so if you use the code partner 10 at checkout i'll show you how to do it here on gumroad then you'll get 10 percent off so if you want to check that out i'll leave my affiliate link down below in case you also want to help support this channel so hopefully that gives you a lot of really fun stuff to play with i think an empty asset browser is a very depressing asset browser so even if you don't have any money to spend hopefully i've given you something to put inside of the browser that you can play with if you want to help support my work and this channel then feel free to sign up to my patreon at patreon.com forward slash Curtis Holt. You can also check out my other resources at 
forward slash store. Follow me on social media for sneak previews on things I'm working on. Join our Discord server to take part in discussions. Check out my second channel for conversational content and all sorts of other stuff. I'm going to get back to making stuff, but before we close this up, there's something we do on my channel, which is where at the end of every video, I give you an emoji to put in the comments so I know who made it this far. And the emoji for this video is going to be a box, a cardboard box. It might be called package. And I think that's an appropriate one because there are so many packages for you to play with this time. So if you put that down below, then I'll know who the real OG viewers are. Oh, and a little tip for Windows users that don't know how to find the emojis. If you click on a text entry section and press the Windows key plus the period key, it should bring up an emoji interface. So that's a little tip for you. Now, is there anything else I need to talk about before we close this up? I don't think so. I know I'm going to remember something as soon as we finish. I guess if something else does come up, I'll just have to make another video about it. So go ahead. The stuff is all ready for you to play with. Thanks for watching. Have a fantastic day and I will see you next time.